Today we will be presenting a rare malignant uterine mesenchymal tumor. We will start with clinical history. 36 year old female patient presented with abnormal uterine bleeding. Ultrasound revealed a large polypoidal hypoechoic mass in the uterine cavity measuring 8 into 6 into 6 cm in size and extending to the upper cervical canal. Myometrial involvement was uncertain. Valdheim's hysterectomy was carried out along with removal of pelvic lymph nodes. Gross examination. Specimen of uterus and cervix with bilateral adnexa was received. Uterus was large and bulky and showed a large, soft, fleshy, polypoidal mass, light pink in color, rising from the wall and projecting into the uterine cavity and measured 7 into 5 into 5 cm in size. Myometrium appeared unremarkable and did not reveal gross infiltration by the tumor. Upper cervical canal was dilated and filled with similar polypoidal mass. Bilateral adnexa were unremarkable. Pelvic lymph nodes were small and 7 in number, largest measuring 1 into 0.6 into 0.4 cm in size. Microscopic examination. Endometrium was thick and was replaced by a polypoidal malignant tumor made up of undifferentiated small, round to long, thin, tapering spindle cells with minimal eosinophilic cytoplasm. Nuclei were central, large and highly atypical. Some bizarre nuclei were present. Cross striations could not be visualized. Stoma was edematous. No heterotropic elements like cartilage and bone were seen. Tumor cells were infiltrating superficial myometrium. Cervix also showed similar polypoidal tumor with similar histomorphology. Ovaries and tubes were unremarkable. All pelvic lymph nodes were free of tumor. Here we are seeing a uterus with cervix, endometrial cavity and upper cervical canal are dilated and filled with soft polypoidal mass with grey bunch like appearance in some areas. This is a low power view showing large thick polypoidal tumor replacing the endometrium. The myometrium appears unremarkable at this magnification. Some bulbous papillary processes were also present. Another area showing prominence of round polypoidal masses which are seen grossly as bunch of grapes. These polypoidal masses have mesomatous stroma in the center and there is increased cellularity in other areas. Here we see a polyp lined by endometrial lining. Stroma is made up of round to spindle shaped malignant cells. Another area of the tumor showing entrapped benign endometrial glands in the tumor tissue. Lymphovascular invasion is clearly identified in this field. Higher magnification of the same showing benign endometrial glands and malignant stroma of the tumor. Another section from the deep area showing infiltration of the tumor cells in the superficial myometrium. Benign glands can be seen in this section also. Higher magnification of the tumor showing round to spindle shape of the cells separating the muscle fibers. Nuclei are large, hyperchromatic to vesicular and show minimal to moderate amount of cytoplasm. Mitotic figures are easily identifiable. This area demonstrates the spindle nature of the cells more clearly. In other areas, the tumor cells were round and contained vacuolated cytoplasm. Section of the tumor from cervix shows a polypoidal tumor covered with squamous epithelium. Subepithelial layer shows cavium layer which resembles granulation tissue. Another view from the cervical tumor showing myxoid change in the stroma, 
rest of the area shows similar morphology. Diagnosis is embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma, variant sarcoma botrytis. Rhabdomyosarcoma is the most common pure heterologous sarcoma. It is the most common sarcoma of genitourinary system in childhood, under 8 years of age and young adulthood. Rhabdomyosarcomas occur in generally two locations in the female genitalia. Some are confined to the uterine cavity and others arise from the cervix and vagina. It is rare to have embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma of uterus and cervix in the same patient. The tumors are polypoidal and fleshy in nature and are described as cluster of grapes and are called sarcoma boitroids. The name comes from the gross appearance of grape bunches called as botroid in Greek. These tumors are a variant of embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma. Vaginal bleeding is the most common presenting feature. Radical surgery is the cornerstone of the treatment. Survival rates vary from 60 to 90 percent. Sarcoma botrytis has been reported with marked tendency for recurrence locally after excision and to invade adjacent organs. Sarcoma botrytis is a variant of embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma but may contain any or all three histologic types that is alveolar, pleomorphic or embryonal. The following microscopic features are characteristic. An overlying epithelium, a subepithelial cambium layer, round and spindle shaped rhabdomyoblast of varying differentiation and central myxomatous stroma. The following are the differential diagnoses: adenosarcoma. These are polypoidal uterine tumors which fill uterine cavity and are seen in elderly women. They show benign endometrial glands and malignant stroma. Glands show leaf-like pattern and malignant stroma is fibroblastic in nature. Then carcinosarcomas. These are also polypoidal uterine tumors which fill uterine cavity and are seen in elderly women. They show both malignant endometrial glands as well as stroma. These tumors are also called as metaplastic carcinomas. Then leomyosarcomas. These are soft tumors and if submucosal may project in uterine cavity. Tumor cells show smooth muscle differentiation with spindle to fusiform cells, eosinophilic cytoplasm and cigar shaped nuclei. Unique features of our case are Simultaneous presence of tumor in the body of uterus and cervix. Young age of the patient that is 36 years. Generally they are seen under 20 years of age. Cambium layer not well defined in most areas and rhabdomyoblastic differentiation is poor. Thank you.